Hi, this is Honor from Citadel Tower Radio, and you're listening to Frazzlecast. Welcome to Frazzlecast, episode four. Know me? Don't you know me? A podcast by a Blizzard fan gnome about World of Warcraft and geeky stuff. Each week, we are joined by awesome people around the world of Azeroth and beyond. Before we get on this, I need to explain the title just because people are going to be like, what? In Dexter's Laboratory, there was a, um, a clip where they had this this uh, this this elderly gentleman like, know me? Don't you know me? But let me make sure to add that to show notes. At Dexter's Lab. <laughs> okay, so today we are joined by... T- um, <laughs> we are joined by... Uh, my uh, my friend and fellow gnome, Jer. Uh, it's actually Jer, but Jer. that's fine. <laughs> it's basically all my characters are named after, you know, my name's Jerry, so it's just Jer and then whatever I stick on the end of the name. Nice. But thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. Th- 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 thank you for coming along, uh, coming along and joining us at the, at the table. Um, it is uh, great to have, uh, have, have somebody about my height here. <laughs> it's always good when you get multiple gnomes together. Absolutely. And we are also joined by Lady Emma. Hey, everyone. And uh, Lady Emma is not a gnome, but I think you have a gnome or two. I have two gnomes. Okay, so 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 we can count it as, a, as like three gnomes at the table right now. And we would be joined by Deceiver, but he is currently off fighting an evil mage. So... He'll be uh, he'll be back next week, and uh, so how has your week been? And wow, or beyond? Uh, mine's been pretty good. It's kind of the usual. It's saying that I'm gonna try to hold back and not play as much as I usually do, and you know maybe try to play some other games, but that never works out. I do the whole <laughs> I'll log in just for an hour and knock out some world quests or an emissary chest and then next thing i know it's four hours later so <laughs> yeah um, pretty much that's all i've been doing right now just you know uh trying to snag another legendary i think the only ones i still have left to get are the two new ones that were added so i'm trying to get one of those and just boost my gear up as much as i can before raid night nice uh- and uh, your um, your raid night's uh, Sunday night, is that correct, or Sunday afternoon? Yeah, Sunday evening. Okay, nice. I, and uh, how's the tomb so far? I, you know what, I really like it a lot. I like it better than um, Nighthold. So, like more story or better bosses? Um, I, I combination of I like the story and I think the bosses' mechanics are more fun and interesting Nighthold. It's not that I didn't like the Nighthold, I'm just enjoying Tomb a lot better so far. Yeah, well, and and, and what's cool is, is hearing and seeing some of the stuff in, in uh, Tomb, I'm like, I, I I keep wanting to jump into LFR or jump into a uh, run of Tomb. I've just been uh, working on a lot of other things. And uh, and the fights, the fights so far don't seem to, the fights in Nighthold seem to drag on a lot longer than the ones in Tomb so far. Although I've only seen the first five bosses on normal, it, so so like so like some of these are quicker, just a lot of mechanics and a lot of having to dodge things. Yeah, and Nighthold felt at times like there was a lot of um, the fight kind of dragged down for a while, and then right at the end, you could you know do a couple things wrong and and wipe, and then have to start all over again. Yeah. I- even in a, even in LFR, I, I I I'd agree. It can't seem like that. I got frustrated um, with people with the cake boss, as they think it's going to be like LFR where they can kind of ignore mechanics, and people weren't stunning the little robots, um, so they couldn't go and grab the cakes, and everyone else have to monitor to make sure they get cakes, and it was just like frustrating because. I see everything that's going on, and I'm like, you can stun these guys. Stun them. And then they blow up, and then everyone dies, and it's a wipe. Fun. (laughs) Very fun. 
And uh, how's your week been? And uh, um, I know it's been not been in World of Warcraft, but how's your week been, Lady Emma? Um, my week has been busy, very busy. Um, I actually I, I got my license again not t- too long ago. Well, my sister gave me her car, so I finally insured that. But I'm not driving it. My mom is. The, so, but and uh. So that way you can play more Pokemon Go, right? Oh, totally. Um, actually, I've been frustrated with Pokemon Go due to the fact that um, I mainly do it when I'm on the Sky Train. And FYI, everyone on the Sky Train is like a subway, but above ground. Uh, and it, it goes too fast, so I can't spin or catch things. So oh. I. Yeah, so I've been frustrated with that. Um, but I've been playing my Pokemon Sun. I basically finished Moon. Now I'm working on my Sun version. And I forgot how tedious leveling Pokemon up is. Oh, yeah. And, and is it different in Sun versus like some of the earlier ones, or is it the same? Um, I found the easiest one out of all the games to level up Pokemon would have been X and Y. Okay. Um, I felt that one you just burn to level 100 super easy. Um, this one is not too bad, but um, I'm basically letting my boyfriend play the storyline for it. So all I'm doing for the game is leveling up Pokemon. And he hasn't left the first island. I have all the Pokemon from the first island, so I'm just leveling up what I have and waiting for him to continue on the storyline. Nice. So, um, yeah, that, that, that's probably the, the most boring part there. Um, of course, I've been playing a little bit of Steam games. Um, like right now, I have a, a Solace Tear up because it's easy to do while chatting. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a gaming uh, podcast. So I've got to add some Steam games in there, too, a little bit. Absolutely. And wasn't there just a Steam sale that was really good at- I missed it again. Um, I did get notifications, and some of my games that I wanted were like $2. But it just came to... um, Hold on a second. Um, I had a cat issue. (laughs) Attack of the killer Um, cat. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. He was walking past my mic, and I knew he was jumping on top of my desk. And (laughs) I stopped my mic at the perfect timing because he just hit my mic. Um, So you guys would have heard that. Uh, Yay, cat aggro. Um, Yeah, so I missed it um, just because it was like, uh, do I really want to buy this now? Do I? Do I? So... um, I did add some more to my uh, favorites or wish list, but uh, I didn't buy any. Yeah, I, I had the same. Like, I saw the Steam sale. There were a couple of games that came up. I was like, uh, I think that came around the time I was starting to work on the podcast. So I had to put a little, a little bit of like money into a couple of things for the podcast. And I was like, podcast, Steam sale, pod, podcast. So yeah, it was fun. <laughs> Yeah, I just purposely avoided it so that I didn't add to my list of 30 plus games that I've never played. Yeah, the the, the one that I I got and uh it, oh and uh, in the chat room uh Defrixo got a uh um couple of games from from the Steam summer sale. Uh which games did you get? But yeah, for me I there's a couple of games that I've gotten over the years from sales. Um someone in one of my classes has developed a Steam, a Steam game. So it was like five bucks, and I was like, "Hey, I I've met the person in the class. I mean, at least through text. I was like, I'll buy the game. They're an aspiring game developer. I can't remember what the game is called right now, but but yeah. Um, other than that, I'm like, I'm not going to do the Steam sale just because if I buy it, Shark Shark Attack Shark FPS. Interesting. It, 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 I'm fascinated always watching Jimquisition and just seeing what they do. And like seeing all the, all the Steam games out there, some of them look amazing. Some of them look eh, not so great. And apparently, the PS4 store is getting into this issue where they're now allowing everything, and it's turning into some not so great games on on PS4. Oh, that uh, just because you're talking about PS4, I remember reading a tweet this morning about how people are freaking out that the 3ds 
are the new 3DS, they stopped producing them. And it's like, well, they're not stopped producing the extra large three new 3DS. It's the normal size 3DS, which were like special editions. Okay. Because everyone else is going for the larger 3DS XL. Well, I have the, the larger one, but I also have the Pokemon 20th anniversary, which they didn't tell you was a normal size. Um, and you can compare the screen. It's really tiny. Uh, but what's special with the normal size new 3DS is the face plates on them. You can change them. They give you two different sets and you can change what your looks like. Nice. But it only came in normal size, and it started off with Animal Crossing, and what I think is they produced way too many and not met any bought Animal Crossing. So they had all these extra 3DSs, and they're like, well, what can we do? And start just doing random promotions for random stuff. What they should do is kind of like what Xbox is doing of just letting you change it, but then produce it on demand. Because like that Xbox is controllers you can make them in any color you want and they'll just produce it on demand well uh, um nintendo's kind of doing that but they're doing it worse where they're gonna make let's say only 200 devices now you have over a million people fighting to get those 200 devices well Nintendo can sell it at any price they want because they know people are wanting those products. Yeah. Now, once they're all gone, they're like, oh, too bad. And the people who end up, let's say, got 25 of those products, they're now putting them on eBay and upcharging them ridiculously. But because there's only 200 and you want one of those, you'll pay the ridiculous price. Kind of like everyone's freaking out about the SNES Classic. I'm like... Don't exactly. you remember what happened with the NES Classic? We went like, oh my goodness, it's the NES Classic. Oh, we can't get it. Now they're like, oh my goodness, it's the NES Classic. We can't get it. I know. I I'm know. sad that I didn't get one. I, I did want and one of the classics. And I don't sell anymore. It's like, no. come on, Nintendo. But how I see Nintendo doing it, which is kind of smart, is that in about maybe five, ten years, when there's an anniversary or something like that, they can bring it out again. And the small numbers and still get max price because not everyone has gotten them. True. Well, and one of the things that's kept me from getting a Switch, um, apart from the raid lockout on my wallet, has been ah, screensaver. Sorry. <laughs> I forgot to, I've got an app on my thing that calls Caffeine and, and uh, forgot to, I forgot, forgot to engage it. it. It tells it to not go to screensaver. Um, the Part of why I didn't get Breath of the Wild is, I mean, or Switch is I'm thinking, what happens with the, there's some amazing amiibos for Breath of the Wild that you can't get and they unlock some amazing DLC. I'm like, I don't want that. I mean, I want the DLC, but it's like, I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to deal with Nintendo and their limited quantities. Yeah, it drove me nuts because uh, the little figurines, I was trying to collect all the Pokemon one, and I think I'm missing three or four because they were only at selected stores, and there was only a limited amount. So uh, I, I basically have to eBay it if I want them, and they eBay and Amazon overcharge like crazy. Yeah, for everything. I mean, that's, that's eBay. Yeah, I've never understand understood their limited quantity thing because it seems like they – push it to the extreme where they're leaving money on the table. Yeah. But, and it's cause like, if I'm looking back at history, they, they've done it all the time. Like we was limited switch is limited right now. Well, yeah, it kind of creates, I feel like it kind of creates a snowball effect because you know, now based on the, uh, that was last year, right. With the NAS classic. Now all the people who like to buy up, um, you know, like Emma was saying, you got people who, who are going to buy 20 of these things. Those people are, are even more on alert now because they know Nintendo will probably have short quantities. So, and they, they, they can drive the price up on eBay. So they're going to be trying even harder to snatch them up. Yeah. When they could just release it on the switch has a virtual console app that you download. But then again, I'm of the theory and it's a very unpopular one that Nintendo should just go the way of Sega and just release their games on any console. Get out of hardware. 
You make great games. You make amazing games. Just- well, they do to a certain extent because uh, some of the games I can download straight onto my 3DS. Some of them I can download on the Wii U, and some of them you can, uh, and all three. And they can be from games that are from GameCube, uh, Nintendo 64. Uh, even Nintendo games. Now, the main reason why people want this little Nintendo box, or n- the original Nintendo Mini, was because there was like 15 or 25 games already on the device. So you don't have to download it. It's one package. I, I, I get that. But how many things do I have plugged into my HDMI already? I have my Apple TV or insert Apple TV, Roku, whatever your streaming device is, insert that. Then I've got my PS4, and I keep having to change out because, and you know, actually, I, I got two HDMI ports. But yeah, and and, and um, the freak show just mentioned uh, Sega just released a whole package of free classic games on mobile for free, and Sega's doing it smart. Release the game for free, give you a couple extra bonuses if you want it for a small fee, but you get the game. Yeah, the other thing too. I, I mean, I I understand that it's cool to get the. You know, the, the mini systems do look cool. And if you're a fan of Nintendo, you know, you've got the nostalgia factor and it is nice to, nice to have it if you're a collector. But for almost the same price and maybe a little bit more money, it's pretty easy these days to find a fire stick that's loaded with hundreds and hundreds of games, including all the, you know, whether it's Nintendo, Sega or whatever. Yeah. Uh, well, and uh, and like emulators and stuff like that. I mean, it, I, I remember we were at, the, uh, at our local fair Actually, no, it was our state fair, but still, we were at our state fair and, and we bought this this device that had thousands of games, really only like 20 games, but they just kept repeating it. But I was playing Mario <laughs> on this little device. Uh, again, it, it was not official, but, it, but yeah. And, and, and Emma, on the thing that you're saying about like the virtual console, you can get them on there. But the other thing that I don't like is that they don't go with the... The account they they go with. The, I mean, they're they're slowly moving into it. But even then, if you bought stuff on the Wii U, you have to rebuy it for the Switch. If I, if I understand right. Yeah. Um. Basically, I have a U we uh a Wii and a Wii U, and what they've done because my games don't transfer over to the Wii U, they put a Wii U emul. Oh, no, not Wii U. A Wii emulator on the Wii U. So basically, I download all the content off my Wii, and they put an emulator of a Wii U on there. So I actually have to sign into a Wii. U, uh, Wii. Oh yeah, because um, I, I did the same for both of my both of my sets of uh, niece and nephews because they they each got a, a Wii U. So I was the one who uh, got the. I, I I did the sacrifice of having to take their Wii and put onto the Wii U. It was so it was so hard because then I got to play it after they were. Before. I know, <laughs> but, um, but I'm pretty sure the Switch is going to have something similar, so you can still play those games if you've already bought them. Um, oh, there goes a dragon. Uh, <laughs> my cat just knocked over uh, one of the uh, welplings, the bronze welpling. Nice. <laughs> Is it, like uh, a, is it like a cat boss in an MMO or, or something like that? I'm trying. I thought I remember there was like a cat boss in one of the games I played. I don't know. He's right now really, really bored and is trying to grab my attention any way he can. <laughs> that- and he, he's not a normal cat to knock things over. Yes, his butt pushed over Trivia Pursuit, yeah. but he's not one of those cats just to push things over. Or, or, or sitting in the salad dressing and then moving it all around the... Well, sitting in the salad dressing is what he does. Okay, sorry about the loud noise. You just jumped. <laughs> yes, you're fine. I, I I will normalize the recording, so don't, don't worry. Everything I just have out. a dog, so luckily she'll uh, stay on the ground. <laughs> it, and my two cats are, are outside of my uh, recording studio. It's just, it's just a bedroom, but they're outside of my recording bedroom right now, so... Well, what my cat really likes is to be abused. I I am not joking. <laughs> so, <laughs> You're right. Um, my the rougher you are with my cat, the more happy he is, and eventually it tires him out enough that he'll go sleep somewhere. <laughs> I haven't done it yet, so he's like, "Okay, let's play. Get, grab a toy. 
Let, 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 let's play. <laughs> time to play. Time to play. Squirrel. Time to play. Time to play. Squirrel. Um, and he, he, he plays rough back where my arms are a little scratched up and my coworkers ask me every day, is like, is everything all right at home? Are you okay? <laughs> and it's like, it's rough housing with my cat. So don't mind me. Just ignore these scratch marks. Oh, it, my cat does some of the play biting, but that's, that's, a, that's as much as I, I as a, when it was a kitten, it would do the batting. It does it less than it used to because it realizes that I don't like that. It's like, okay, I won't do that anymore. Yeah, we've tried to stop him. Um, he just doesn't get the concept that his teeth hurt and his claws hurt. Um, yeah. Even after we trim his claws, he'll stop it for a bit, but then go right back to it. It's like, isn't it fun? Uh, well, and my cat will attack the other cat just for fun. And my other cat like, stop it. Will you please just leave me alone? I'm, I was sitting here in this nice sun ray. You attacked me. Yeah, my, my cat likes to be choked. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm not joking. I'll just leave my hand there and he like in a open wide, and he will put his neck in between my pointer finger and my thumb and push all the pressure, and then all of a sudden you hear him start choking himself. And I'm not squeezing nothing. He's putting full pleasure of pressure on. Yeah, I don't have a normal cat. I I'm not abusive to animals. I'll just rephrase. I am not abusive. He's just a masochist. Hey. They're supposed to be all. They're all supposed to be a little bit crazy, I think. Well, and, and have, have you heard the, the theory about? Um, sorry for any listener who might be eating right now. If you're eating, stop eating for the next couple of minutes. Um, have you heard about the theory of cat poop and how and how cats are actually trying to get to get us to, to be eaten by them? I can't say that I've heard that one. <laughs> It's one of my favorite theories, and apparently there's some little scientific effort, evidence. See, I just know that apparently cat fecal matter apparently can help cause depression, apparently. Well, from what I understand, what, there's a chemical in it that when mice eat it, mice then are attracted to the cat, and they might want to be eaten by the cat. So when humans are cleaning up the cat litter pan, we inadvertently get it on our skin, so people have theorized that because we love our cat so much, because we really want to be eaten by our cat. <laughs> I think I just lost the entire show. <laughs> I, didn't lose, I didn't lose the entire show, but it's just that's just one of my favorite theories. I'm, I'm, I'm like, it explains why we love cats so much. And I'm like, just roughhousing with the cat so you can leave me alone eventually. <laughs> Sounds good. And. Uh, and uh, Jer, right? Is it? Um, yep. Kind of like uh, Jerry. Jer. You got so, it. Um, Nihar was asking if if we could uh, introduce the gnome questions. So I'm going to ask these, and I'm not going to like these questions because I. Why are gnomes considered so vicious? Um, I don't think they because they're ankle biters. Because they show no mercy in the battlefield. I like the ankle biters. I, I think they're too. considered um, intelligent. That's how they're. That's what they're considered. And technological geniuses. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. And ankle biters and the geniuses because our stuff will blows up on accident. Goblins just want to blow things up for no, ma- no matter what. So, so Jer, how long have you been playing World of Warcraft? Um, coming up on two years. Although probably as far as playing. As far as it being my main game, about a year and a half. And then before that, I had tried, I think I tried playing it, I want to say during Wrath of the Lich King. But at the time, I had a real, I just had like an off the shelf uh, computer. I don't, it didn't even have like a standalone graphics card. And I just wanted to try it because I had friends bothering me to, to try it. So I tried it for a couple days on the free account and I, I liked it and I could see why people played it so much. But at the time, I just didn't. The idea of paying fifteen dollars a month to play a game seemed weird to me when I was already playing. At the time, I was really into Call of Duty, so I pretty much came home and played that every day with friends and family. So, pretty much didn't go back to it until I built, I built a PC for the first time three years ago, and I built it thinking that I was just going to use it as a, like a multimedia 
hub and take all my movies and download them to the hard drive. But then I stumbled on the steam and then I decided to try an MMO. And then next thing I know, that's all, that's all I use my computer for now is playing, <laughs> playing video games. And, um, I think I tried a while at that point, but I ended up really getting into star Wars, the old Republic and played that for a couple years. But then I eventually moved, uh, moved over to world of Warcraft. Um, like I said, about two years ago. And, and then when Star Wars The Old Republic kept making what I felt were really just stupid game direction decisions, I finally decided to switch over to WoW full time. And I'm really glad I did because I, I think it's a much better game. I, I, I can definitely echo what you're saying. And because like uh, I uh, was in WoW years ago left because of money and just not finding a community other than rating. So I, back then we didn't have Twitter. We didn't have all the stuff we have now. It was harder to stay engaged And our guild broke up. I was like, I don't need this anymore. So then I, but then I came back in 11, but still didn't find that community. But then I think last year I, I was getting, I was getting lonely in single player games. It just, there's something about playing MMO that just is fun knowing that there's somebody else out there when you're playing single player Nobody out there. So I, I then went to ESO, probably about the around the time that that, that, you, that you got back into WoW, and uh, I uh, came over here just because ESO added those RNG crates. Yeah, and I was I was in a good community in Star Wars. I got really lucky. Like I said, it was my first it was my first MMO and the very first guild I joined was a really positive experience because I had, I had talked to some people at work who played and they had these horror stories of, uh, you know, just a lot of toxicity and drama, which I didn't want anything to do with, but the first guild I found was a great guild. I'm still friends with a lot of those people to this day and it was a multi-game guild. So at one point they actually started a wild guild at the beginning of warlords and I would play, but I was so into star Wars that I just kind of didn't, I didn't get it. And Star Wars, I don't know if you've played it, but it's it's very heavy on voiceover and animated cutscenes. So switching from that to WoW at the time was just very jarring. Um, it's not that I mind reading quest text, but when you go from almost all animated cutscenes to just reading quest text, I kind of just couldn't get into the story. So I would play, but even at that time, even though that was more into Star Wars, I acknowledged, I'm like, man, there's a lot of stuff this game does that it you can just tell it's a it's a more polished experience. Yeah. Um, And, and that guild was also a horde side, which I didn't realize at the time. Uh, It just, what really pulled me into the game. The two things that really made me um, get into wild big time was switching. You know, I actually, I kept my subscription going, even though I wasn't playing just in case one of my friends wanted me to jump over and play for a little bit, but I decided to cut it off. And on the last day my subscription was active, a friend of mine who I've known for a long time messaged me and he's like, Hey, I, you know, I heard, I heard you've been playing WoW," And I was like, yeah, I'm a, I actually canceled my sub cause I just don't play it that much. And at the time he was like, well, we're thinking, you know, me and a couple of friends are thinking about getting back into it, but they, um, you know, one of the guys only has Alliance characters. So we, we'd be playing over there. So I was like, Oh, you know what? I've never made an Alliance character. I'll go ahead and make one. And, made a human warrior. And then the first time I got the storm wind that I don't know what it is, but it pretty much, um, I think I, I think I heard you mention once it was like the, just the aesthetics of the Alliance side appeals to you more. And that's pretty much what happened with me. I got there and started messaging one of my friends who, you know, played wow and star Wars with me. And, and he, he had been playing hard, but he was like, yeah, you know, I really prefer the Alliance side. And then I just started asking him questions and he's filling me in on all this lore. So that was the second thing that really pulled me. And once I started hearing about all the lore, I started looking into that and I've always loved that kind of stuff. So that, that really pulled me into the game. And then ever since then, I've just been, you know, reading as much as I can online, um, going back and trying to experience as much of the game that I missed, um, which is another thing that's great. Um, you know, even though I didn't start playing, even though I missed a lot by now playing early on when the game came out, there's so much content now to go back and play. Yeah. And, well, and, and and the great thing is, WoW adds so much cash mechanics. I mean, even like in seven point two point five to point three, they're adding things to let people catch up. That, and that you may have missed it being current content, but except for certain things, you still can access it, which is great. I mean, like I, like I played all through Warlords this past week, 
But I, yeah, I forget to mention, I got Pathfinder finally in Draenor. Congrats. Oh, congrats. It, I, that was the last zone I needed, so now I have all my Pathfinders until the next. But it was fun playing through Draenor knowing, okay, yeah, no, it's not, not, not current content, but I got to play it. And that was that was one thing that I wasn't there back when I used to, the, back in vanilla, because there was only vanilla. But it was amazing how much content's still there. Well, classic or vanilla um, isn't really there because it kind of got a revamp with the cataclysm. Yeah. So if you want vanilla, vanilla, it you won't find it right now. And I'm not going to do the methods if there are any methods. Everyone listening knows the methods. To get. <laughs> yeah, we know the methods. They're not good methods. Um, I have a coworker who did those methods. Um, that's fun and dandy. Um, I will pay to play, um, but not play uh, pay to win. Yeah. Well, and, and there's enough in the enough time spent in the retail that I don't want to spend my time on a on a non retail and have it go away. Yeah, the the hardest part will be because I transferred all my tunes to uh, a different server and all that. Um, if for whatever reason Blizzard decide, hey, we don't want to, you know, spend time on this game anymore. We want to close it, end it. All I will be thinking is all that money and time I spent on a game that now is gone. Oh, believe me, especially with how Blizzard now has so much revenue stream. I don't think I don't think Blizzard's going to take a while away because well, if you look at how much money is being made by all these other games, Blizzard makes enough money. <laughs> yeah, but they might have get bored with doing it, right? Um, because one of the theories was uh, level one hundred was their cap, and then they were going to get rid of the game. Then now this expansion is okay. They moved it to 110 and they're giving everyone everything that they wanted in the game, including a kitchen sink, maybe a kitchen sink. I don't know. Have you guys gotten a kitchen sink yet? I I think I found one, but then I think Nomi tried using it and it's destroyed. Ah, well, so this is, could be the last expansion type thing uh, because we're getting everything. People wanted a recap of the Emerald Dream. They wanted Moose Mounts. They wanted Illidan back. So Blizzard kind of like, hey, we're going to find a way and give you everything, including the kitchen sink. Well, have, let me just, I think tomorrow it comes out. Listen to the Blue Recruits' Lounge Episode 1. It's their their new podcast. Eh, listening to that, we're just getting started. Yeah, well, it's kind of what I think, too. And there's always a next generation of, um, of people who grew up playing the game who are now working for Blizzard. So, you know, they're, that's why, I, you know, I see a lot of people when someone leaves, there's always some people in the forums or wherever you look online and they're, like oh this guy must be falling because someone left the team and i'm always like you know this person's been working on the same thing for 10 years or more they they want a different challenge they want to move on to something else and it's always good to bring in that means somebody new's coming in who can bring a fresh perspective and and keep things moving like I, i'm going to say a very unpopular opinion because i know there's a lot of people who don't like this company but i feel the new apple actually there there's missteps in some areas but they're actually undoing some of the things steve jobs or maybe Steve Jobs had the thought, but I, I feel like they're actually. I like the new. Pers- I like the new perspective of the new Apple. See, I I love Apple. I really do, but I haven't really liked the new, like the new iPhone Seven. I do not like it. Um, it. I'm also finding like the original music program on the iPhone and iTouch is what attracted me to really to it, and they've changed it so much now that I hate it. Well. Partly uh, because they're using that as their servers revenue, so they're 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 pushing heavily the Apple Music, and and and, and I agree on that. Yeah, I was like a huge Apple fanboy, and I still, you know, I have an iPhone. I haven't moved to the seven yet. I've I have a six S, but I don't. You know, my pot, my experience with this PC that I built has been nothing but positive over the last three years. It's had absolutely zero problems, and it's gotten to the point where. You know, using a Windows machine both for gaming and at work, when I do go on my 
Um, my laptop, which is a Mac, I just kind of get annoyed with the changes and I don't think I'll get another Mac computer right now. I'll probably stick with the iPhone just because I don't really like Androids and I don't feel like switching, but I'm not as big on them as I used to be. It seems lately they make changes just to make changes so that they don't say stagnant, but it it doesn't seem to add add to the user experience. It It is more, more Android-like, I, I believe, in, in, in the latest one. Yeah, um, I have the 6. I'm fine with the 6. I stopped using the music program on there. Um, I would love to have the, a choice of having the original music program. I found it was a lot easier to control and use. Yeah. Um, I lent my uh, original eye touch to my mom, and she gets me to work with it every once in a while. And I'm like, oh, I wish this music program would still, you could have that as the option. Yeah. And- I agree. I got, I'm, uh, I'm, I, I kept iTunes match so I could have stuff in the cloud, but then I, I use Pandora. I'm on the new uh, Pandora premium service. And that's been what I, for me, Pandora premium has finally gotten what I wanted in music. I just want to put something on. And if I want to search something on demand, I can look for it past that. I don't really, I don't really buy music anymore. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not downloading it in different ways, but, I'm still getting it. If I like the artist, I'll buy their CD and have an actual physical copy. Um, because you know what? Digital copies can get so easily corrupted. Yeah. So, and I understand a physical copy, it can get scratched um, over time um, because it's a, a gel. The gel through the different temperatures will actually fade and degrade. I understand that. But a digital copy will get corrupted a lot faster than the physical copy getting wrecked. Especially if you're, if you're uh, con- converting. I, I, this past week I was looking into different like MP3 um, wave. I was looking at how I, I, I was researching compression and it was amazing to think, wow, an MP3 file, if you start out with an MP3 file, it can get pretty messed up. Yeah, my problem is I'm somewhat lazy and an impulsive buyer. So I'll just be driving around, I'll hear something, or I'll remember, you know, an album I wanted, and then I'll go ahead and pick it up. Um, Because we're also talking about the community, I'm just kind of bringing this up. Um, Basically, I put in a ticket a while ago to do with an achievement, and I got an awesome response. And I would love to share my response, if you guys don't mind. Oh, absolutely. um, Nihar has been sending me some of the ones he's been getting, and I I love... I, I, I love the, the uh, GM responses. Um, yeah, definitely. So this one is, howdy, Emma. This is your friendly neighborhood game master, Lord, Lord Ron. I am sorry to hear that the Murlocs have refused to acknowledge the epic feat that you have performed in, the, in their name, uh, in the name of their people. I marched down to Azuna and had a chat with King Murglurgler, um, and he agreed that your contribution to the Murloc cause is, are indeed worthy of a celebration. You have been awarded the No uh, Selfish Endeavor Achievement, and your name shall be recorded on the Beach of Heroes of for all eternity, or at least until the next high tide washes everything away. I would also check your bag as I saw the king himself slip something shiny in there for you. I hope this addressed all your concerns you had today. Please let us know if uh, of no of their okay that is totally written wrong. Uh, let us know if there is anything else uh, that we can assist assist with. Nice. Yeah, that's but it, awesome. It, it was just the response was like very storytelling, very, to me, epic. And yeah. I love it. I actually saved this because of how much I loved the response. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and they make, and they make it, they make you feel like they, that they, it's more than just the game to the, or more than just a job to the, uh, to the, the person running it. <laughs> and it wasn't just like a, a copy and paste answer because i i've complained about achievements not working and they're like oh sorry nothing we can do you you didn't get the credit or oh you gotta try again and maybe you'll get it 
This was, okay, it's not working. Yes, there is a known cause of this. So I'm going to make this really epic story and make sure you have that achievement and the item that it comes with it. Nice. Yeah, all my interactions with Blizzard customer service so far have been really positive. They fix the, they've fixed any problems I've had really quickly. And even when I've talked to a GM in game, um, I ran into some who do like that response that you have. They put in some extra effort. Well, and I had two 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 instances when I was redoing Frasley's name on. I, I first redid my battle tag, not realizing that battle tags can have punctuation. And I I sent one saying, "Hey, I did not realize that this had." I, I like to just capitalize the F in my uh, name. And they said, "Oh, sure, we've." Uh, and they said. And they, and they made a story about it, and, and, and that was cool. And then I had brought over – I could not get Frasley on, on Wormrest. So then I I added Frasley S thinking that they could be punctuated like in vanilla, and they took out punctuation of the names. I, I, I told a GM and I said, oh, uh, we, we see what happened. Okay, um, he, there's a, a name change. Um, your, your character has been flagged for name change. Two instances where they could have said, sorry, you got to pay again. They were just like, nope, here you go. Like that's incredible. I have heard stories, and, and like like um, Nihar is probably writing in, in chat. There are a couple times somehow he didn't he didn't he didn't get his boost. I mean, there are there are times where 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 they fall down in uh, in, in what they're doing, but for the most part, they've been incredible. Um, and usually, uh, if a post and all that, as long as you're in good mood, you can even ask them to leave you a joke. Like, uh, this one is like, Hey, um, are uh, warlocks cookies gluten free? Even better, they're golden free. <laughs> nice, and, and, and you get this like stuff from them, and it it, it, it gives you that personal touch to it um you know instead of a copy and paste answer of say sorry for the issue no we can't help or you know um please try again or um i have i will admit i have gone at the completely wrong answer um and i guess they realized the error because i got the email and i'm reading it and it's something to do with um honor points and i'm trying to figure out my question wasn't anything related to honor points i have no clue what they're talking about and saying that they can't help me well when i go home and check the ticket in my game um they actually answered it properly but they have totally made a mistake the original ticket that they sent me and did you let them and did you let them know about the um about the wrong ticket so that way that way they could see if there's an issue with their system um, no, it's, it's just human error. Um, I know with my work, um, if you have tickets open and all that, and you mean to answer one person, you might accent answer another one if you have multiple open. Yeah, it happens. It errors. Like I said, the email I got was wrong, but once I logged in to see my ticket online, it was correct. Nihard just said a joke in chat. Last time I told a joke to a gnome, it went over his head. Swag glasses. I think that's what they're called. My, my nephew tells me that the sunglasses are called swag glasses. He put, he put my name. <laughs> yeah, Nihar told jokes to me. That went over my head. Yeah. I think with a company as, lar- as large as Blizzard, and you figure the amount of you know customer service requests they, they have to handle every day, there's no way they could be 100% perfect every time no when, no it's it, it's hard and uh like i said my work we deal with a lot of customers and people um actually they're not really customers they're clients and you, you, they get cranky especially when you don't answer them in their what they think is a timely manner which is two seconds after they send a response <laughs> isn't that like human nature hey i this is really important to me well, yeah, but we have a lot of things to get. <laughs> I know for me, um, I locked myself out of World of Warcraft um, during BlizzCon. That was the worst thing ever because I couldn't. Uh, what what happened was I got a new phone and my authenticator didn't transfer over properly. And at the time, I couldn't use the authenticator to get into uh 
the game because I didn't have it set up on my new device. Ooh. Yeah. Um, let's just say it was a very long BlizzCon. And I think halfway through, I realized that maybe I can turn on my old device because all the memory stuff is still there. And that's how I end up actually getting my code. But I was freaking out. I'm like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? And then the other thing that really sucks is my name on my account is not the same name as my, as my license because they actually asked you to send a photo ID of your license to prove that this is your account. Yeah, because they've had enough people trying to either sell accounts or trade or just or steal accounts. Yeah, where my yeah my my name my real name is not on my account because before uh, battle net names tags type thing was uh, came around, um, it used to be real ID and you would have your real name and I really didn't want everyone to know my real name. I I don't blame you, but I yeah, don't blame me. Yeah, I uh, I only give out my real ID request about it to specific people because I people can probably find my name through different ways, but I know your name. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, and anybody who looks at our SoundCloud knows my name too. I didn't say that. <laughs> uh, for the, for the cast is on SoundCloud, so I, I know from uh, Fitbit. <laughs> yeah, and again, I. I, uh, oh, and, and I need to say with Fitbit, there was a sad loss this week. I used to use an app that would, that would, uh, charge $5 for every missed Fitbit day, but then give you money. Well, they just announced that their business model did not work. And I can understand why, because your, your people didn't, people didn't want to sign up for, <laughs> I was one of the crazy ones and I, I made money off of it, but they also had bad support. Yeah, I never did it. I have another one that's called Carrot, and it's a government issue app where if I do a certain amount of steps per day, I get points for uh, uh, my scenic card, which is for movies, um, or I think I have shoppers par uh, points, shoppers drug mart type thing, and basically c- accumulate points to get free stuff. Nice. Okay, so yeah. Without getting in the, into politics, I would love a thing like that for the United States. I, I, I mean, th- there's a, a medical plan in another state that gives you a reduced premium for getting Fitbit steps, but because of things, I can't get it. I mean, I think it would be cool to incentivize people. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to go, <laughs> but that is well, cool. You're in the states. Uh, do you guys? No, you guys don't have Cineplex there, do you? I if we. If we do, it's the it's movie not, theater. Does the Cineplex have heavy wards? I think the Cineplex is in the states. Sounds familiar. Yeah. Well, basically, there's seen it point, and uh, basically, the app that I was talking about, Carrot, um, uses the seen it points. Do you need a government ID? Hey, for carrot? No, um, you do need a British Columbia, I think, address or at least postal code okay. for setting it up, I think. I can't remember. I really can't remember how I set it up. It was a while ago. Um, but it's like really small amount of points. So if I beat the goal each day, um, I get four points. That's awesome. It, I like those. I yeah, because uh, I, tr- I tried asking my uh, my health insurance because I'm paying a lot of money f- and I'm not even using it because if I use it, it, it'll cost me more. And I'm like, can you give me a discount because I got Fitbit? No, because you're not in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my job used to have incentives like that. And there were various ways that you could earn points. And one of them was to get 100,000 steps per month. Nice. So, yeah, I made sure I wore, I've got a Fitbit and I just wear it all the time. Even though they discontinued it, I still, I still, I still just like tracking my steps. I'm really bad because I don't sync my Fitbit and I lose, like my Fitbit app doesn't keep all my progress, but I have, I, I do keep my Fitbit on pretty much every day. Okay, good. Because uh, there are a couple of days I've not seen you on there. I, 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 there's one day I was like, are you okay, Emma? I just, I just want to make sure that, that, like nothing happened or you didn't like get abducted, abducted by aliens. 
No, um, I just find the Fitbit app tends to not always uh, work for me and I have issues syncing. Like, um, I finally joined your cha- Daigle challenge. Um, I'm apparently right un- underneath you for the, the challenge. And what's strange is, like, everybody tells me, I, I, I must have, like, the lucky Fitbit account because everyone tells me they have issues. And for me, I never have, but yeah. But, you know, I, I don't know why, but <laughs> I never have issues. But then again, I'm always tech- checking out stuff. Like, I uh, I just got a Google Home because it was on sale. So I can access my Google Home to my – um, I, I don't, I, I don't want to initiate it, but to my um, A-L-E-X-A. So unless they know how to spell, but there's a, a skill from GitHub – but you could not add certain Google Home skills without having a Google Home. I was like, okay, I'll try one out. <laughs> so I've got my home sitting next to my A L E X A. Well, for me, technology um, just seems to work whenever I come to it. Yeah. Um, and then the other uh, thing that I have is for my, that can let, can, I can speak. Uh, connects to my uh, Fitbit is um, these Walkman people thingamajigs um, that uh, basically with the steps I take, they grow. It's like basically a gigapet or nice. nano. Or, yeah, so that will connect to your Fitbit as well, by the way. What was that one called? Uh, Walkman. W O K A M O N. Okay, I, I'm gonna have to look at that. Aptech next to and uh, um, Jer, um, before we get off of uh, your earlier interview, um, you were mentioning about um, cutscenes, and I and I agree with you because I had been in a while before, but then I went to ESO, which had amazing cutscenes. I mean, it had those full like voiced and they would even they didn't have some of the cutscenes that that star wars had because i i never played star wars but i i saw enough reviews saw enough gameplay where you would have like amazing cutscenes um final fantasy 14 had those and those were amazing too but final fantasy 14 did not voice everything if you were in the united states or at least in english speaking but eso had everything and they even had the 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 new dumbledore not, not the not the original Dumbledore, but the second one. He was the voice of some of the characters, and they had oh, the, Michael Gambon. Yeah, and he he did an amazing job. Like you could tell, he was like Tim Curry. He he loved his character. I was like, that's cool. And, and yeah, come back to wow. It's like my first time getting back to wow. I was like, this seems not boring, but. Not as interactive. They, they've definitely upped their game in Warlords and in Legion. I, some of the cutscenes are a lot better. I I think that's one way that they could revitalize the game a little bit further is make the cutscenes be a little bit more interactive. Yeah, definitely. But I, I agree with you. I think over the last two expansions, they've been improving greatly. And I feel they've gotten to the point where they might not have as much animated and uh, cutscenes or voiceover work, but what they do have is far and above any other game that I've that I've played. Like I, I would rather have a short cutscene that really has a huge impact on the story than you know constant voiceover work and cutscenes throughout the game where it's just go here, collect this, you know, just basic basic quests kind of stuff. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think that's what that's Taron Gregory's team. Yeah, they've and, just and, been doing phenomenal work. Like the last, um, aside from, you know, you've got the really well animated trailers for the, um, the launches of expansions, and those those make me wish that there could be a wow animated film because they look so good. There's a lot of things they can do with World of Warcraft. Um, I wouldn't mind a, a cartoon series or an anime series um, based on, off the lore. Yeah, c- kind of like the the ones that, that they did for the Legion launch, right? I mean, I mean, do you remember they had a couple animated shorts? Yeah, they had a nice mix of um, different media for the launch of 
Legion. You had the fully animated ones, then you had the ones that were just kind of like a moving comic book. I like those a lot too. It, well, and, and they had the audiobook. I, I want more audiobooks for a while. I, I, cause that's some of my best way to consume the media is just hearing it. And like the one they did for Legion was just engrossing. And uh, are you familiar with uh, Taron Gregory's story? Yeah. Didn't he get hired after he made some machinimas? Yeah. And, and that's really when in game cinematics went like they exploded and just like using some of the, the techniques of machinima. I think that that stepped Wow's uh, in game presence up because like Wow's always done a ama- blizzard well, always done amazing cutscenes. But then when he, when he came and started working with them, the, the end game cutscenes went like um, in, in the grand, both the in engine and the pre rendered cutscenes are, are amazing. Like, like the one with Thrall and, and Garish. I, I, uh, it's amazing. And yeah, um, the freak says, are right. The Overwatch MA shorts are beautiful. And I don't know if it's the same team. Uh, my, my, my nephew was so excited that Activision and Blizzard does Skylander shorts I, 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 on, on Netflix. I don't know if they're the, the same team, but apparently those are well done. I've not watched them. So I'm taking my, my nephew's word that they're good. So they could actually be cheap. Yeah, some of the Overwatch shorts, you would think that Pixar made them. That's how good they are. Yeah. And they some of them might have taken as long as a Pixar animated movie. Yeah. I, I still remember the original World of Warcraft cinematic. I would just keep watching that over and over. That music is just ingrained in my head. I still like going back and watching those. I I, I need I need to watch some of the ones that from, from that I missed, but because like there's so just there's just like so much amazing cinematics, and that that's why I was excited when the Warcraft movie came out because that was it was just cool to have another version of Warcraft in media. Yeah, definitely, and I, I liked the movie. I thought it was good. It, I still haven't finished it because whenever I start watching it, I'm like. Oh, I got World of Warcraft right in front of me. I'm just going to play because <laughs> it makes me want to play because it's like it's, it's the same stuff. I'm like, it, so I, I got to sit down and just and watch it all the way through. <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan now, but I haven't finished it all the way through. <laughs> oh, and another joke from Nihar. He's not here. What's the difference between a gnome and a football? Loose. Oh, no. I was going to make a, a Charlie. I was going to make a Charlie Brown joke that Lucy's holds the football, but um, no, no. <laughs> and, uh, and again, these are all from Niar, who is a gnome, but these are all, it is, there is no, there is none. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm just going to finish these out so we can be done with them. I heard oh, so how, how about how about I know uh, an answer. Um, the difference between a gnome and a football is Charlie Brand can't can't hit one of them. <laughs> <laughs> there, there we go. Yeah, Nihar, your birthday gifts in the mail. Yeah, they might get there by thirty-two eighty-six. Oh, is it his birthday today? It it might be. Oh, oh, um, of the uh, of the Frazzlecast shirts, I got one, and then I um I sent I sent I sent a Nihar a uh, Frazzlecast shirt. So I I can't send everybody a Frazzlecast shirt, but uh, yeah, so, uh, uh, so I've always sent two. So don't 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 email me saying, "Hey, where's my Frazzlecast shirt?" Because <laughs> sorry. They were on sale for the first couple of days that, that they were out. Ah. Uh, I heard Nor- Orgamar has burgers that have 100% no. Oh, oh, I misread that. I heard Orgamar has uh, burgers that have 100% no meat. That was. <laughs> can't, can't we say gnome meat? It, 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 it has uh, it, it has 100% no meat because no, no meat. Yeah. 
And what do you call ten taran, one gnome in a large field? <laughs> a good game of five aside football. Yeah, Nihar. Oh, come on. You gotta step you gotta you gotta step it up, do better than that. Those are like uh like mom jokes, you know? They're too easy. Come on. Yeah. I, I thought they were like dad jokes because they're lame. Oh, there you go. Dad car. And I like you. <laughs> so, um, b- b- before, uh, oh, wow, I just <laughs> realized what time it is. <laughs> These are fun. I feel like we're just with friends, but sometimes the time just flies. Um, Jer had and some. We haven't uh, done any trivia stuff. Yeah, but, but before we do that, real quick, I want to. Uh, Jer had some interesting questions I think would be fun to kind of discuss. Um, so, um, thoughts are lore is critical to the enjoyment of WoW for some, whereas others don't care about it at all. How does the impa- that impact how people in both camps approach the game or their immersion? Yeah, I just find it really interesting because, like I mentioned, one of the lore was one of the things that really finally made the game click for me and pull me in. And pretty much any game that I play, I I really try to delve into everything behind the characters and the the story of the game. But I've played with people who play the game a lot and have played since the game first came out. And I've only been playing, you know, like I said, seriously for like a year and a half, but I'll mention characters to them and they're like, yeah, I don't don't know who that is. Or I'll start geeking out over something that's happening in the story. And they're just kind of like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I just like playing the game. And I'm like, you know, that's cool. Everybody plays the game their own way, but it's just, it's also just strange to me. Like, I'm like, well, how for me to invest the amount of time into a game that I, you know, do playing this game, I, to me, the story is integral to it. Like if I didn't, if I wasn't interested in that part of it, I don't know that I would enjoy playing it as much as I do. So it just interests me that people can play and not really care about the story at all. Okay. For me, cause I've been playing since classic vanilla. Um, I felt it was really hard for me to kind of get into the story. I love playing and I like, you know, how I had to kill like 20 boars to get, you know, one heart and I need like 15 hearts. Um, Don't know why all these bars don't have enough hearts, but anyway. (laughs) Um, uh, But for the beginning quest, there wasn't, I felt there wasn't much of a snoreline. I couldn't see the connection um, until I got to... uh, Wrath of the Lich King. I actually burned to Wrath of the Lich King because I was still trying to do Cataclysm stuff while Lich King came out. And actually the achievements is actually what made me burn my character to max level um, was because I got really into the story of the Lich King and especially Ice Crown Citadel area. Um, because as I mentioned in other podcasts, the story of um, Arthas as a, a little boy, and he's trying to warn you about how evil he has become. And I just got really immersed in that. And that's when I started getting more into the lore or when I started reading the World of Warcraft books. Now I get to know a little bit more of the background. Um, I never played the original Warcraft games and I would like to, but they're not my style of game. Um, so I probably will not, but I wouldn't mind having someone do a YouTube video where it does all the recap of the story of that game. So I can actually know the lore behind more of these characters. Um, but I'm also a social player. So as long as I'm playing with people, that will keep me into the game. Um, what I usually now do for an expansion is my main character will play it all solo so I can see all the lore. I will close any speak chat type thing, make myself invisible, don't want to talk to anyone, have an NPC type chat. That's the only chat I see until I finish all the storyline. And once I finish the storyline, when I work on my alts, then I'll burn through it with uh, friends. Yeah, I tried playing Warcraft three, and I just, um, I just couldn't. It, the like you were saying, that kind of game just doesn't hook me like this one did. It was kind of cool to go to see, 
to see see the game from that perspective, but I just couldn't. Uh, I haven't really played it since. Yeah, my uh, sister used to play it, and same with my boyfriend. But it's I'm not good with that type of strategy game. I can strategize. I love uh, logic puzzles and all this stuff. I, I like to think, but it's too tedious. Um, it's the same thing when I play Heroes of the Storm. It's a good game, but I can play about five games and then I'm done. Yeah, I, for me, it's the it's how how wow is uh, how wow is both inter- interactive. How it's a world. It, it, it's what gets me. I, I like I had to do Heroes of the Storm earlier this year to get the Flame Saber and then the Graves Combat Pet, and it was a slog because like I was like I want to be playing something else. Does I think maybe does have you, have you looked to see if it. I, I, I'm going to get his name wrong. Nobel or Nobel? Does he have a uh, a lore recap for like Warcraft? Uh, you the, know, what? I'm I'm actually looking that up right now because <laughs> the same thought occurred to me because he does such a great job with his uh, with his lore videos. Yeah, I would think it, that he does. Or even not, not only that, but I'm sure somebody's got a collection of just all of the the cutscenes. From See, that's what I kind of wanted is someone to do a cutscene and just let me watch it. Um, I even asked my boyfriend, "Is like, hey, if you ever play them again, I, I just want the storyline. You, you play, I want the storyline. And for me, I, I'd say, like, I, I definitely love the lore and I, I read the quest decks. My issue is sometimes retention because there's so much, sometimes my mind's hard to, retain the information either either going too too fast like in a dungeon or or i read it thought i ha- thought i grasped it pressed accept or complete i'm like wait what, what did they just say so i i have to sometimes go back and f- listen to podcasts look up things to, to to fully get the storyline but the more i'm hearing it and understanding it the better i'm getting it um the books play a huge part i find with some of the lore um like the the well of attorney series is good for information um i had a hard time reading that series i i think in past podcasts i mentioned it the print was really tiny um there could have been just my attention span wasn't there um the first one the rise of the horde um, it's the first one I read, and it was really well done. And it really got me into the characters to know more about, um, you know, Draenor. And I, uh, when Draenor came about, I already knew the story. And I was telling my boyfriend, like, why all these changes were so huge. Yeah. And, and yeah, the, the, the books, like, I read the... the uh... Warcraft Traveler book one and that that was engaging and 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 I, and I think sometimes it's just like so much that it's hard to hard to hard to retain it all. I'm amazed at the at the people in lore who can get it. Like um, Elder Scrolls is, is I would actually say Elder, Elder Scrolls has the same type of lore as well. I mean, different storyline, but they have a vast library of lore like in, in other schools you could pick up a book you know the the single player or the multiplayer and just start reading it and, and it, there'd be like some random thing and be like oh and, and then later on somebody has to connect where it is yeah, and i don't know why but the lore in elder scrolls just never grabbed me like the lore in wow did wow just seems much more interesting the characters are just more vibrant, I guess you could say to me. Whereas with Elder Scrolls, I'm even though I loved Oblivion and Skyrim and I played them for hundreds of hours, it would be hard for me to sit sit here and like write down the name of even five five characters, I think. Whereas Warcraft, immediately you start learning the names of important characters and I don't know, I just think it's a I, I think it's a better lore overall. And novel Noble or Noble. I actually don't know how you say it either, but he, he actually did a complete playthrough, it looks like, of Warcraft 3. Nice, yeah. yeah. The only thing I have complained about the World of Warcraft characters' names is they're not easy either to pronounce, to read, or they're very similar to, like, five other characters. 
Yeah. That's like Lord of the Rings with Sauron and Sar- Saruman. <laughs> Yeah, that, that type of thing. Um, and for me, I'm horrible with regular everyday names. Just, you know, throw in some unique spelling and pronunciations. I, I'm lost. Yeah. It, <laughs> but, but like um, Elder Scrolls had the same way. I, there are some interesting stories in Elder Scrolls. There's one story I will not repeat at all because I don't think it's... I don't even think an explicit tag would be <laughs> would do it justice, but it's a story. I'm like, so is it like Moonguard? <laughs> yeah, it's in the vein of Moonguard. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just wow. gonna. And thankfully, I don't think we're explicit this episode, so I, I, I think we're good. But still, I, I'm not gonna say anymore. But but I I I, I think it's also the lore that 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 that, uh, that, that grabs us because. I will agree. For me, Warcraft grabs me, but I don't know. Uh, I don't. Um, but I, 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 I've uh, talked and I've even like listened to some of the lore podcasts for Elder Scrolls back when I was heavy into that. And they have a way of making me like that lore. It, it just, I, I think it's. Would it be safe to say? Maybe it's a bad analogy. What are Warcraft's? Almost like, or Warcraft lore is almost like Narnia lore. And then Elder Scrolls is a little bit more like Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings is, because it's, no, that's probably a bad analogy. But I, I'm trying to think. Without, we'll see, with World of Warcraft, it, it's like each, every character has some sort of story where they either put like little treasure holds in a random book that you find in the world and they'll mention something and then you find out that there's a whole character based off of that like the whole steamy romance novels how many is there and they're all pretty much readable except for one or two with the sticky pages <laughs> um elder scrolls has uh, has one called the lusty aragonian main and we're just, or made it. Or and we're just gonna we're just gonna go on, <laughs> but, but yeah. Well, and 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 there is a there is an an alliance only quest in the Broken Sword scenario that if if you hadn't been looking out for it and if someone had, you could have easily missed, which was actually it was pretty cool that there's this little storyline in the big content, and when I and it actually the storyline actually made me cry a little bit. I mean, because it was it was it was sad, but it was just amazing. That, that small little tidbit. Well, there's um, a storyline because, you know, I'm always on the hunt for Raphion. And in Draenor, uh, when you're at the Taylor's, uh, Sergeant Taylor's uh, garrison, there's actually a journal in there. And that's how you find out Raphion was actually there. And it's like, you could easily miss that. You could have seen it, seen that there was a journal entry, and throwing it out without reading it. And you would never have known Raphael was there trying to uh, warn him. Nice. It, it, and then, and then it, it appeals to the, uh, to the fan of that character. I mean, cause like, uh, I, I, I think maybe Raphael might be one of your favorite storyline characters. And I, um, I don't think he's one of my favorite. It just kind of, from all things Azeroth, Medros hated him so much because he's a black dragon. And I felt like I just, I needed to defend him. He's a baby little dragon. He's like four years old and he's <laughs> getting hated on. I'm like, he's just starting. So yeah, I have a, I have a soft spot for him there. But uh... but I I. I uh... I've learned so much about Rathion from, from from hearing you talk about him. I'm like that it, that, that it's amazing all all the lore that is on that. There's a lot of lore on him, even though he's only been in the game for three expansions. Wow. Yeah, uh, but there's also a lot of story about even the old gods finding out about them and how uh, Deathwing got corrupted by them because he was the earth warren and he was in the earth and he was closest to the old gods. And that's how he absorbed um, their corruption. And 
Well, and, like, and I'm wondering if he's going to play a, a role in 7.3 and, and beyond. I, 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 that's all I'll say about 7.3 and beyond, but there's... Well, originally, wasn't he supposed to be involved in the quest line where you went into Neltharian's lair? Because I thought I read that their original plan was to have... I forgot who they changed it to. They changed it to... Um, Oh, uh, you mean uh, Raphion was supposed to be uh, the Black Dragon, but they changed it to an Elder Black Dragon at the end of the quest line. Yep. Yeah, and the reason why is Raphion didn't quite make sense why he knows all about this, as he's ha- it's not that old. He's still a very much a baby. So they needed an Elder Black Dragon that was hidden from everyone everything and so he stayed on the broken shores and apparently Deathwing didn't even know about him yeah I remember being very disappointed when I was doing my first playthrough and I got to mists and I you know I found him up in that tavern but you know it was way past the expansion so I couldn't do his quest line anymore for the legendary cloak so I kind of wish I understand why they removed the legendaries because they're not relevant anymore but i wish they would leave those quest lines in so people could could do them well i think they should have left the quest in there and they should have left the legendary because they've left the legendary for every other expansion like you can still go get the um warlock daggers uh that raffion sends you on this quest for the fangs um you can still get um so uh okay yeah uh thunder fury (laughs) did someone say thunder fury (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's true yeah. because I did hunt down. One of the first things I did when I first started playing the game full time was I went back and I got uh, Shadow Morn. Yeah, the only legendary I think you can't get was from the original Nax Ramus when it was in Classic. I believe there was a staff in that one. I think that's what it was. Ooh, that and, transmog. Uh, or no, legendaries they, can't be transmog. Yeah, um, so that, that staff, right? So that staff um, got lost when they redid Nax for um, Lich King. What? So, yeah, I believe there was a legendary staff in the original Nax. What if I just had an idea? It's, it's a tangent, but what if they were to? create a legendary appearances for old content, the same way you're, you'll be able to use your artifact appearance in the next expansion. What if they did that, brought in the ability to get older legendaries? That would actually be pretty see, cool. See, I, I think they shouldn't be able to um, uh, transmog for legendaries because they are supposed to be one of the kind, and I think you should spend the time and energy getting them and that's why I think they should have left the cloak in um, the ring wasn't really much of a transmog item but I, I don't see why it wouldn't why it hurts so much keeping it in the game true, true. and especially because it's not going to help with item level really not really unless they're trying to do a, a certain feat where um, they cap their character at that certain level, and they want to own PvP. True, and well, and, and I think they're trying to balance things that, that you can no longer get to keep things special. But there's so many other legendaries. Are they going to make those disappear? Hopefully not. I still need to get Thunder Fury on Frasley. Yeah, it's, I, uh, it's uh, Atiash, the Great Staff of the Guardian, the one that um, Medivh had, and that. Cadgar got from. Yeah, I'm missing one legendary at this point in time, and that is the hammer from Alduar. Aldum, whatever it is. is that the, yeah, Alduar is the one where you can try to get um, Nimiron's head, right? Yes, and you get it off the last boss, not the actual Nimron boss um, and you have to have it on 25 mode and hard mode. Hard mode is you don't ask for any of the guardians to help you. Interesting. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because I've done that. 
I, I just processed what you said. Yeah, I've uh, I keep trying for new run set. I just hasn't uh, RNG has not been in my favor. Well, I've been trying to find people to go with. Um, and doesn't mind me uh, rolling for the head as well, only because I'm trying to cut uh, like the fragment so I can get the legendary item. But I, I, I seriously miss my World of Warcraft. There's a lot of things in there I do want to do. September. Remember, Iron Man. I know. My friend's like, maybe you should wait until October, because apparently September is going to have really great weather. And I'm like, I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. I do have a time card. It's in a box on my shelf behind my Griffin and my Worgen. I, I think... We- um, well, it would be it's just still there because I think I think Nihar might uh, have taken it. No, it's still there. I see it. Okay, it's guarded. D- so don't tell Nihar your uh, address. You, so you guys are planning to- on doing the Iron Man challenge? Yes, in September, me and Deceiver. Nice. Yes. The reason I'm not joining is I don't think I survive long. I we we did a a uh, convert to shenanigans run from uh, from Booty Bay to Silver Moon. I died fifty five times. And what level were you? Four or five by the time I ended it. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, stealth cats through there. Um, they and I was they a will priest, kill you on side. So my priest had very low. What I should have done was a Night Elf Rogue. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting leveling it uh, with only white items. Yeah, <laughs> that, that will be interesting. And definitely listen to Wild Challenges podcast if you want to get some uh, tips and stuff ahead of time. They do a great podcast. I am going in it completely blind. Okay. I'm doing this for fun. So you're like Eladin, you you won't be able to see anything. Well, not that completely blind. <laughs> and, what uh, class are you gonna do it on? Um, I think I said I was gonna do it on my warrior. No, I was gonna do it on my shaman. No, not my shaman because I started my shaman. Uh, I don't know. I have to open the game. And speaking of uh, going of going in blind, um, the second question I think actually is a really good one from uh, from Jer. It's with seven point three on the PTR. Lore info is all over social media. Spoilers seem very hard for Blizzard to contain. Do you care? Are there only certain details you try and avoid? What is the etiquette for players or streamers or information sites like Wildhead? Icy Veins and MMO Champion. I thought this was a really good one because it's hard to... There's so much I want to say about 7.3, but I don't know what to say. Yeah, and it's... Like, I try to avoid spoilers for movies as well. I won't even watch trailers if I can because trailers, these... A lot of trailers just seem to give away far too much of the movie. But with 7.3, I I almost... You know, I kind of got to this point where it's like anything that's going to be in a raid... I kind of figure I'm going to see it ahead of time anyway because I'm going to watch guides and it's just so hard to avoid because people just start naturally talking about things. So I've kind of seen, you know, I've seen some of the content that's coming in the raid. So you see certain character names and, you know, information like that. But then I've also seen people posting that there's been data mined information about the next expansion and that I've kind of tried to avoid because if you know, you know, if you know too much ahead of time, then it's not going to be, when it eventually does come out, it's kind of already old to you, which, which I, I don't know. I've, I just kind of frown away from that. I've kind of managed to avoid most of the spoilers other than the fact where we're going. Um, I know nothing about the current raid that just opened up. I, I know nothing. So you didn't watch the cutscene or anything? Nothing. I'm absolutely blind. I, and for me, with WoW, I've kind of... I don't play PTR only because I don't have enough time to test it out and all that, and I don't I don't want to play it again twice because 
there were there was a little bit of people got burnt out. I think like Belusar Gaming got burnt out because he covered everything on PTR, and then when Legion launched, he had already played it. But I I do read some of the spoilers, and I've been reading I've been reading seven point three spoilers and listen to seven because some of it I'm not going to get time to see it fresh before I get spoiled anyway. But I can definitely understand not wanting to hear and see it. Yeah, yeah I'm right me, now would... looking at my ballot and I'm seeing everyone in Tomb of Sagaris, Tomb of T- Sagaris. Apparently we go to the Tomb of Sagaris. <laughs> oh, oh, we do? Spoiler warning. No. Oh, and I, I know Black Temple is now a... Uh, I don't know. It's something. Something's going on with the Black Temple. Um... This one's not as much of a spoiler, uh, I don't think, but I'm probably going to get an email from somebody saying, hey, this is Black Temple is now a time-walking raid. So it's not story, but they made it, because they're actually, they're actually letting people experience old raids as current content. Um, I have been hearing complaints with that, where if someone gets kicked, they can't join another group or something. They're locked to that group. Okay, but isn't that kind of like modern uh, raid raid rules? I'm not sure because um, I think some of them people want it be like where with a dungeon, if you dropped a dungeon, you can queue for it again or whatever, or join something. And this one is like it won't let you. It's like you are locked to that group. So if they seem to be mean, they can kick you and you lose out. But how is it when you're pugging? Like, like if someone were to pug to Mister Garish right now, how does how does the game treat that? Um, basically, um, if let's say you've already killed two bosses and then you join a new group, um, you just don't get loot off of the first two bosses or the bosses you've killed, but you can still kill all this. Now, if you're going to go back to um, Miss of Pandaria and you killed the first two bosses in there, well, you can't join another group until they, I think, kill those two bosses. But then if you go down to uh, ICC, Lich King, if you've killed two bosses and you try to join someone else's group, it won't let you because it says you're saved to another instant group, I believe. So the the time walking is using older older raid mechanics and we're used to the newer ones for it being current content. So yeah, I, I, exactly. I think exactly. I think they, this would, would be a place where I think Blizzard needs to rewrite it to allow for modern raid conveniences. Well, what they might have done is basically um, kept all the raid rules that was with the black temple and just made it uh, flex so it lowered everyone's gear down to that level. And that's probably why these issues are happening. Yeah. So, so either either Blizzard wants to keep it that way because, oh, I just had a thought. It's a tangent, but what if Blizzard is secretly giving us our legacy server, not the way that we want it, but if if we're able to, I mean, or, but, or, or maybe people have already thought about it, because like time walking, time walking is, that's not quite legacy server, but you know, because, because like if, if they're making the rules of the raid like they were before, in a way it is like a legacy server. No, most people want legacy as classic stuff. Oh, like. So you mean like we're like, and you're questing in a zone, you have to fly from... Lachmadan to Azara to Silverprint Forest and then back before you reach level 10? Um, you, you, you're not supposed to fly. You have to walk all that. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Walking from that to that to that. Because yeah. The- and you can't get the first mount until you're level 40 and then you get your second mount at level 60 and it caps at level 60. That kind of legacy. Oh, and, and, and gold is hard to get? Yeah, yes, th- pretty I- much. Um, and then, you know, have the traditional, um, per, not professions, uh, class quests where, you know, certain classes only had those quests and you couldn't do those quests. Um, like, cause for warlocks, we got our mounts and that was a long ch- uh, quest chain as well. Yeah. I, I, uh, I had a priest, a level 60 priest that I played quite a bit of vanilla high, 
high end molten core rating and stuff like that. And it still didn't have all its bag space. It had very little gold when I when I started playing it again recently. I was like, yeah, I, I I personally don't miss vanilla, but that's just me. I, I'm used to the modern community. I, I guess I'm now a I'm used to things being much easier. Um, I actually kind of like it being easy, like where I get my main and I go to Molden Core and I just one shot everything. Um, I actually find that kind of fun, especially when you're farming stuff. Well, so, um, I, I, I really don't care, like even challenge modes and all that. Um, I, I don't want things harder. I want them easier. What I, 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 I missed it. I would love to do Molten Core again because I know they brought Molten Core back in 2010 and I, I, I missed that, that boat, but it would be fun to do some of those again as high level content. And I think that's, that's one reason why I'm excited about Black Temple is I never got to experience it. It'd be fun to see it. As, now, is Black Temple actually going to stay or is it going to be like Molten Core where it was only for a certain amount of time? No, um, um, Black Temple will open up every time that um, Burning Crusade t- uh, time walking comes up. Okay, so there's nothing special. I won't lose out on anything because um, I'm still sad that I never got the pet or the enchanting recipe off of uh, Ragaros. No, and now this is going to be verge on a spoiler, so here's a spoiler for the next five seconds. It has nothing to do with story. Um... But make sure you have your have the war glaives before you you before you go on a, a, a demon hunter because if you already I, have the I haven't started my demon hunter yet. Okay, well, but but make sure you get glaives because if you if you already have them, then you get an achievement for for going through on a demon hunter. Okay, okay so, I have them on my rogue. So so um I I I think you'll get it now if you. So, and spoilers over. We're about ten seconds over the spoilers, so I apologize for anybody. <laughs> I didn't mean to spoil Mog and achievements. So, did you two both play um, in vanilla? Yes, um, my ex got me hooked on in two thousand and four. Nice. I I uh, I started um, in Christmas of two thousand four, and I played through t- two thousand six. I kind of left again because of school, just life, and all that, and. I had I, I didn't I did I didn't I did MMO hopping before because I was in NRK Online, Star Wars Galaxies. Um, then I, I went to City of Heroes for a while. Um, I think one or two more, but I played I played vanilla and then I left before Burning Crusade. Me, um, I played like I said in two thousand four until uh, me and my guy broke up. Then in two thousand and six, before Burning Crusade, um, I got my own account and started playing so trying to rush to uh get to max level i didn't make it like i said lich king was the first time i ever had a max level character this is definitely okay. fit, fitting music for this <laughs> the glory days yeah being someone who is recent you know i'm new to the game but my opinion on it you know just reading everything and and hearing people talk about it it sounds like one i don't I would hate to see Blizzard waste any time on legacy servers if it takes away from creating new content. And it seems to me well, like I I can understand the nostalgia of, you know, the vanilla aspect of the game. And I would like to have experienced it when it was new. But I think if they tried to keep it like that through, you know, what are we up to now? Seven expansions. I just don't think anybody would play the game because nobody has the amount of time to have the game be that restrictive when there's, you know, seven times the content that there was when the game first started. So I think it had to loosen up and become more accessible over time, or it probably wouldn't have been able to keep going. Well, one of the things that people want is uh, there's already free servers with all the content and all the information, all the coding. And what people want is Blizzard either to try and get that coding back from them, because apparently the reason why legacy servers aren't around anymore is because they don't have the coding, and just make servers of that uh, extent so if you just want classic go to the free server try get all the contact information and just have a server of classic and then if you want it up to burning crusade then burning crusade let's king so you can do what tier 
you want. Um, what people have done in game is once you hit level 60, you um, lock your character to 60. That's as high as it can go. And you can't get any new stuff. You can't get any of the newer pr professions that came in la later. Um, so they try to keep it as classic as possible. And, and yeah, I, well, and part of the issue I've heard is because they don't have Blizzard's coding and they kind of reverse sometimes scripting's off on things. Um, but there are some amazing, there are ones I've heard that have amazing scripting. But again, you're, you're playing on people's guesses, so looking at YouTube videos. But I, I think you do make a good point about time and also the competition for games. I mean, back when that WoW came out, there was a lot less competition, I believe, for multiplayer games that weren't FPS. Because back then it was like 1942. I think Call of Duty might, might have already been out. But there were less MMOs, less things. Now there's so well, much. Well, there was EverQuest. EverQuest yeah. was pretty much very like World of Warcraft. Um, even Dungeons and Dragons was kind of having theirs, which had lower quality. Uh, so there was a lot of games, MMO games out there. Um, that, but Blizzard, you know, I know people who still play EverQuest, and I couldn't get into that. Yeah, me either. Um, one one thing is, if you die, your corpse is up to grab for anyone to loot. Um, I don't like that. <laughs> Sounds like Awaken Online. Yeah. Um, e even Eve Online's horrible. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I've heard the stories of like of people losing hundreds of thousands of dollars of real world money because of Eve Online. I'm like, yikes. Oh. Uh, there was this one guy, he spent a lot of money on the schematic for the ship and time and energy to build the ship. And people, t like his friends or who guild or whoever he played with, told him that there was an easy, like, pick apart, like, ship where they can, you know, go on the PvP and kill. And they give him the coordinates, he goes out there, and it was an ambush on him, and they destroyed his ship. He didn't even have a two seconds to even get out of there. They destroyed him. And all that money, all that time is now gone. And it's all recorded, and you hear him swearing, and he's so upset. And I'm like, I could not play a game like that. Yeah, I want to play a game that if I die, it's like okay, I have to pay a little bit of gold to repair my armor, but hey, I can walk back to my body. Well, and and then with that, you have like I know like something awful has been a site that's been around for years. They have their their goon squad, and the goon squad intentionally goes after people like that because they want to they want to cause a scene. <laughs> I think the the meanest thing that Blizzard has done to us in when you die is sometimes you you're at a spot where you have to get to your body and it's in the middle of the sea and you didn't die in the middle of the sea you died on the land and for some reason your body's in the middle of the sea and and yeah and you're on the other continent and I don't know I've never had that uh, what I had was one time I was in High Mountain and I. I fell down off a mountain because I thought that's where it was. And, and then I, I think I actually had Deceiver on voice chat because we, he was, he and I were trying to quest in high mountain. He's trying to find me. He's like, where are you? And he's like, I see your body, but I can't get to it. And I'm like, I can't get to you. There's a ghost. Yeah. I've had my ghost at a graveyard on the opposite of the, the uh, continent, so let's say Easter Kingdom. So I'm at the top of Easter Kingdom, but I'm dead in the ocean way down below, and I'm okay. trying to figure out how did this happen. That sounds like a glitch. It is. It's totally a glitch. Um, kind of like how it, warriors would, would jump from the uh, sky hold and end up in the wrong place. Exactly. It's it's just a glitch that happens. But I think it's also maybe Blizzard kind of trolling you. It's like, okay, you've died quite a few times. I'm just going to do this so you get a little frustrated. It, yeah, it, probably it's good for you to get up and walk around. So first at that at that spirit healer, you take about five minutes and just get, get, get something to eat. Yeah, I think that's why they put Ting Me Back to the Graves 
site type thing. Yeah. But I wish that Ben will let you pick which grave site you want to go to. I really do. That'd be cool. Or like if you just I just said, wish they would always let you fly from the gravesite. Yeah, like in Suramar. That was cool. Only some parts of Suramar you could fly to around. Yeah, you're right. Because a few places would like I'd be I'd be on a I'd be on a, a, a flying mount, and all of a sudden it would dismount me. It'd disappear. I, yeah. Well, originally, back in those old days, there was no flying mount, and you had to walk back to your corpse or take red sickness. Up and down uh, through five miles of nails. Both no, ways. No, it's no, no, it's <laughs> yeah, no. no. thanks. And it's then no. there is um, in High Mount, and not High Mountain. Uh, it's where South Shore is, that okay. area. I I hope about um, foothills. The, the, the snowy area, you die up there, and you know you have to walk. I do kind of miss having uh, a home base in South Shore, though. Yeah, I I uh, kept getting killed on a PvP server trying to kill Metzen. Thankfully, I was on a horde because it wasn't that far of a walk, but the Alliance had to walk pretty far whenever they got killed. Oh no, there's um a grave uh right behind. So it's not that far of a walk for our alliance. Okay, yeah. So I see what time it is. Do we want to wrap up or do a little bit of trivia? I, I don't want to go too long if you guys because I don't want to. I don't want you guys to be asleep tomorrow. Um, I can do half an hour longest. Okay. Sorry, it, that that meow was Neko. I was moving her so I could actually see the screen. That's good. How about you, Jer? Yeah, I can do another half hour. Sounds good. So yeah, let's do a trivia because that's always a fun one to do with guests. Trivia pursuit trivia. <laughs> yeah, and maybe one day I'll win. <laughs> but actually, no, I think I did win at least one or two. Yeah, it'd be nice to actually see. I bought the, I bought it when it was on sale during that spring cleaning sale that they did. Oh, nice. But it's like there's never anybody to play with because... <laughs> okay, well, then you cannot actually help. So that means I can play as well if you want to pull yours out. Uh, yeah, let me let me go get it. I don't even think I've... I don't think I've opened it yet. But, yeah, let me go grab it. And uh, I've got mine for a later, for a later game. So... Because... Uh, I, I got it for Christmas one one year. Um, I actually got a lot of cool like Warcraft stuff with it. So it was a. Uh, I was like, hmm, this looks really cool. Anyway, so, but now I'm glad I got it. I wanted it, but I didn't want to spend the money on it. So I did get it for the sale, and it was actually a gift from someone. Nice. All right. So what do I do? I just need the cards then. Yep. Um, I have the markers out. I have a green, blue, and pink. I will still pink. I'll, I'll, I'll go blue. Okay. And, uh, Jer, you'll have green. So what I'll do is I'll roll a dice, and whatever color that dice is will be the question. Well, now, my problem is I can't, to be fair, I don't want to see the back answer. So for you, Jer, you can read me my questions. Okay. And you can roll the d- colored dice for me if you want. So uh, who do you want to go first? Who of us or... or- yeah, I can go first, I guess. Sounds good. Pardon me? Uh, I said I, if I, you I, want, I can, I can, I'll can. i go first. Yeah, okay. that, that sounds good. So I rolled orange for ya. How many boss encounters with loot rewards are found in Gruel's Lair Raid Instance? Um, I actually have no idea, but I'm going to say eight. Wrong. Frazzle, do you want to steal? How about, um, how about nine? 
Wrong. And because I have seen the answer on the back, I cannot steal. So, Frasley, we'll, we'll go with you next. That sounds good. You got pink. Hold on, let me pull out a new card. <laughs> what aperture? Attri- I can't speak. What uh, a- a- attribute? That's the word. Uh, does the Master of Atomy skill grants by the skinning profession increase? Uh, critical? Do you want to say more to that? Um, cr- um, critical hit? Um, did it's Yeah. I'm trying to think of like what's the stat, but I know it has to do something to do with your uh, critical hit percentage. Maybe I got that word wrong. You got the last two words wrong. I'll give you one more try. Critical strike. And the last word? Critical strike percentage. Jer, I'm just going to give it to him. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> um, it's a critical strike rating. Oh, CSR, okay. Yeah, but you you get it. So <laughs> you, got, you got pink. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and Jer, do you want me to roll the dice, or are you going to roll the dice? Uh, I can roll. All right, you got blue. And the question is, Netherguard Keep is located in which Eastern Kingdom's zone? Western Plaguelands? No. Uh, can I say the other one then? <laughs> uh, does Frazzy get a chance to steal? Because I I've seen the answer, so I can't steal it. Bradley? Uh Eastern Flaglands. Nope. Oh. Uh, the answer is Blasted Lands. Oh. I was off. <laughs> Me too. Okay, Jer, you got blue. Uh, this one should technically go to Frasley, but um, the answer, uh, question is, what is the historical capital city of the gnomes? Uh, no more game. Yep. Nice. If I had missed that, I would have to like delete my character. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Maybe. <laughs> and Frasley, you got purple. Nice. Which of the following is not a quality of equipment? So not a quality of equipment. Poor, uncommon, superb, or epic? A a superb. That is correct. (laughs) Good. (laughs) I got one of these other one of these questions wrong, I think first episode. That was uh what color was purple? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> All right, so you're up now, Emma? Yep. All right, so you got green. Uh, question is, what demon pit lord was the ruler of Outland before being imprisoned by Illidan Stormrage? Give me a sec. I have the name. I, I have the image in my head. Mamoroth. No. Damn it. Uh, and I shouldn't have looked at the card. I had, 
I knew the answer, but I looked at the card, so I can't. St- <laughs> I, I know. I looked at the card. Well, you kind of have to because you have to tell me if I'm right or wrong. True. I'm going to steal my I'm going to get it wrong. Next, Ramos? No. Um, did you say you wanted to try again? I'm going to just see if you know it. I have him in my head because he's in Black Temple. And uh, here's a hint it's the same first letter. I know it is. You gave. I won't get it. I know I won't. Uh, Meg Theridon. Oh. Yeah, I wouldn't. Okay, Jer, you got orange. The Avenger of Hygel faction is associated with what raid instance? Can you read that one more time? The Avengers of Hygel faction is associated with what or uh, which raid instance? So I want the raid. Is it the fall of Mount Hyjal? Say that again. Is it the fall of Mount Hyjal? I don't think I'm understanding the question. I'm sorry. Oh, you didn't understand my answer? Yeah. Was it the fall of Mount Hyjal? No, it's not. Okay. Um, is it Firelands? Yes, it is. Well, only reason is I I, uh, I got Gloria the Firelands Raider, so that that rep sounded familiar to me. Oh wow! I never even paid attention to the rep in there. I guess. <laughs> well, and, and then I was also thinking that Firelands is technically in Hyjal, so I was thinking, okay, so Avengers of Hyjal might be there. Yeah. Exactly. All right, Frasley, you got blue. Nice. Frizzle and Pogsil speed bar- barrage can be found floating in which flooded uh, calendar zone? Thousand Needles. That is correct. Yes, because that used to be a race trick. Well, I'm just thinking of the no- um, names. I'm like, you better know this. It's all gnomes. No, no um, I think those are uh, goblins. Oh, well, probably. <laughs> you can't mix the two up. That's blasphemy. Because uh, Frizzle's actually in the Mischief um, animated sh- short by Taryn Gregory. Oh, that's right. I guess I need to know my uh, gnome and uh, goblin lore a little bit more. Well, and the other reason is I I would typically always joke that I was going to turn Frasley into a a, uh, goblin named uh, um, Frizzle. All right. Emma, you got... Do you have yellow yet? I have nothing. Okay. All right, question is, Crow Threadstrong continually threatens what specific type of vendor in Shatrath City? Fruit vendor? I'm sorry, what was that? Fruit vendor? You're correct. Nice. (laughs) I kind of remember reading that card a long time ago. I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's fruit. Okay, Jer, you got purple. Which Drake mount can be attained by defeating the infinite corporate in the calling of Strathrum? I think I have this one too, so I'm going to feel really dumb if I get it wrong. I'm going to say 
the bronze drake? That is correct. Nice. I realized that I say nice a lot. <laughs> it's like my word. <laughs> All right, Frazzle, you got yellow. Which torn leader was killed by Garrosh Hellscream? Oh, oh, oh. No, because he's he was uh, in line to be war chief before Savannah took it. Um. I won't get it, so I'm going to pass, but I'll just want to guess the... Or, yeah, I'll pass them. No, no, just take a guess. What, what, what do you think? Something Bloodhoof. I would like to steal if I can. Okay. Uh, Cairn Bloodhoof. That is correct. That's what I was thinking, because cause, cause, cause Bane is on his way to being... Well, that's only if Savannah's, you know, is down. Yeah, I would. I prefer Bane being the the war chief over Savannah's. I, just, I like I Savannah's. I don't. I like Savannah's, but I think uh, I think she should focus on the Forsaken instead of the Horde as a whole. Well, and I think she wants to turn all Horde into Forsaken. Could be. Okay, so my turn. All right, let's see. Got green. All I have is yellow, so I'll take a green. Uh, what burrowing creatures on Pandaria are found marauding farms and stealing crops? I want to say rodents, but it's not rodents. Give me a sec. Okay. I have the picture in my head. There's stupid pests. Vermin. Yep, you got it. And what color was that? That was green. Yay! <laughs> nice. I'm like, I kept on thinking of rodents, rodents. Why do people don't like rodents? But I think rats are cute. No, got to think of Miss Pandaria. What are they? What are they? <laughs> this was my train thought pattern. I was thinking either Hosen or Marmots. But Hosen are the monkeys, and Marmots are just puntable. There's a puntable yes. Marmot toy. All right. Jer, you got pink or fuchsia, depending on what you want to call it. Which profession can create sharpening stones? Blacksmithing. That is correct. Frasley, you have green. Yeah. Who was the elemental lord of fire? Uh, I'm going to get a Ragnaros. Can you say the whole name? Ragnaros of Sulfurium. I, I kind of say some of the name in the thing. Just worded slightly different. So I said, who was the elemental Lord of Fire? Um, Ragnaros, um, Lord of Fire. Switch the last two around. Oh, um, Ragnaros, the Fire Lord. There we go. Uh, I'm not giving you things away. (laughs) That's good. (laughs) The the only way we can learn is to be challenged. I'm hopefully learning from this. (laughs) All right, Emma, your next one is going to be pink. Yeah. 
Uh, what profession is required to obtain Mr. Pinchy? Fishing. You got it. I have Mr. Pinchy. <laughs> I also have the salty achievement. Ooh. Okay, okay Jerry, you got orange. What is the maximum time in minutes an arena match can last? Oh, I don't do PvP at all. Um, <laughs> um an arena. I'm gonna say ten minutes. That is incorrect. Frasley, do you want to steal? So if you already have orange, but you can still try and answer it. I'm going to say only because it sounds like a number that Farina would be five. No, it's 45 minutes. Wow. Ugh. <laughs> I thought some of the PvP was already long enough. I mean, I... All right, Frasley, you're just down to one color, which is yellow. What was the orcish birth name of Thrall? Oh, oh, oh. We just... Okay, orcish birth name. I remember we had this one on another question, and we both had brain farts. (laughs) Yes. Uh, I'm having another one already. I know it's the pressure because it's like, oh, I know this, but it's the pressure. Yes. I'm ready to steal, by the way. <laughs> but you already have yellows, but you can answer uh, if you get okay. it wrong. I'm just. Okay, I, I'm, I'm going to get it wrong. Durotan. No, that is dad. Go well. Oh. <laughs> Superman. Oh, sorry, Su- Jerry. I didn't even let you, you know, attempt to steal it. That's ah, okay. Think um, Thrall Superman. Thrall Superman. Okay, good. So if, if this comes up again, I'll be able to get it. <laughs> so I need blue, purple, or orange. Okay, let me roll again, because green came up. (laughs) Okay, orange. Uh, Before succumbing to Ascendant Lord Obsidius, Raz the Crazed helps defeat Twilight Hammer forces in which dungeon? Calling of Strathorn? 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 No. Bradley, do you think you can steal it? Yes. Uh, can you repeat the question just one, one time? Sure. Before succumbing to Ascendant Lord Obsidius, Raz the Crazed helps defeat Twilight Hammer forces in which dungeon? Uh, I'm just going to take a, a stab, but it's going to be probably a bad one. Um... The uh, um four wins. No, the answer is Black Rock Caverns. Okay. Yes, that uh, sounds right. But, I don't know. I mean, the answer sounds right, but yeah. Okay, you got orange as well, Jer. Oh, this is such an easy one. Why couldn't I have this one? Uh, Captain Cookie, Emerald Snip, uh, uh, Rip Snarl, and Blub Croc can be found in which dungeon? Okay, I know the dungeon, but for some reason I'm blanking on the name, so I'm trying to think of the name. I can, like, see the bosses. It, it's even. the pressure because you can see it and you do know it and once you hear it, it'd be like, oh, I knew that. Yes. <laughs> All right. I can think of this. Hold on. <laughs> I just uh, remember way back in the day in Classic trying to farm it 
and trying to find a group. Yeah, and, and trying to get the uh, macaws that, that come from it. Yes. Because um, there's a, no, the special one was in Strang of Thorn. And that one's my favorite because because it's just like where it's located. Oh, come on. It's got a ship. And and they renamed it too. Oh, not renamed it. Revamped it as well. Yeah. Um, I, do you know oh. if Normal still original? Is it Deadmines? Then, yes, that dead is mines. correct. All right. Yeah, um, Normal's still the... Well, I don't know if it's... It's not classic, but it's... Because it's been even changed since since uh, classic, but it's still there. And then I did heroic for the first time recently. Wow, <laughs> heroic's amazing. Okay, what was the name of the human who helped Thrall escape his imprisonment in Darnhold Keep? Oh, I just did this one for Ma- a mock run. Yeah, I wouldn't have known her name. I would have totally like said Jaina because she looks like Jaina. I'm Valerian. No, that would make sense in a way because she was the one who was in. Um, what did you say? Uh, me? Yeah. Of uh, of Valerian. Valerian oh, no, I'm thinking of Varian, not Thrall. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, Athena Foxton. Okay, that sounds Athena. That's yeah. Now I can picture the NPC talking to us as we're heading out of the dungeon. But she looks like Jaina, and I would totally say it was Jaina. Well, you never know. Maybe maybe Jaina is not a dreadlord. Maybe she's a uh, doctor. And she actually has that's one of her regenerations. All right, my turn. I still need purple, orange, or blue. All right, orange again. Orange does not like me. <laughs> How many raid bosses are found in the Magtherian at Magtheridon's Lair raid? Didn't I answer that question earlier today? No, that was Gruul's lair. Uh, he was part. He was the answer to another question. I'm trying to think of where that raid is right now in my head. Can, can I get? Can I get a little hint? Because I'm so far behind you guys. Uh, it's in. Are you asking for like the zone or? Yeah. It's, Zone or continent game it's in expansion. Outland. Oh, I was thinking of the wrong zone. Illidan was using him for his um his blood, I believe. I'm trying oh. to think of all the raids. It's because I know there was uh, girl's lair underneath. I'm I'm gonna say one. You got it. Really? Yep. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so it's just a single boss one. Yeah, I was thinking it was, but I'm like, no, no, it can't be. Because back then they were still doing like single boss. Cause like a next year's lair is just one boss. Okay, Jer, this is for your last piece you need. Two-headed wolf, Omen, can be fought during which world event? Uh. <laughs> um, I know where it is, too. It's in the Night Elf area. I 
trying to remember like what time of year it is. Grasley, do you know? But don't say it, but do you is know? The, um... And now I think I have the holiday, but I'm trying to remember what the name of it is in a while. <laughs> oh, yes. I just remember him being a pain because you have to try and find a yeah, group, he's... and if you did it on a PvP server, it was horrible. Yeah. Is it the? <laughs> is it the elders? The. Hmm. I think that's the right idea. Don't help him too much. This is his last piece. Oh, I know, but we're, we're, <sighs> we're, we're also running out of t- uh, under time. So. Yeah, I think I'm on the. <sighs> I can't remember the full name of the th- thing. Um, elders. I can't think of the full name of it. Just say something. What do you think it is? Honoring the elders or something like that. I just can't. I know as soon as I hear it, I'm going to be like, come on, really? You couldn't get that? <laughs> I'm going to um, take the... Yeah, I'll pass. No, well, I'm going to steal, but I'm going to give the one to Jer. Uh, to, to, to Jer. Um, it's the uh, Lunar Festival. That is correct. But I really want to uh, give you this question. Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Who is the female Magheart orc mate of Thrall? Oh, they saw the movie. Just because you got Thrall's name and um, go well all the time, especially during Cataclysm, I thought you you have to have this question. I'm good. Rihanna? No. It's Agra. Agra. Okay. Man. We still got three minutes. Okay. Sounds good. I can have purple or blue. All right. Purple. Uh, items with names featuring orange lettering are of what rarity? Legendary. Yep. All right, so we're all down to ones. Okay, Jared, your question is, which undead Nubaran, Nubaran was known as the traitor king amongst his former sus, sus, suspects? Hmm. What's the word? Like, what's the, what kind of a king was he? Uh, wasn't it like traitor king? Uh, the word that started with an N, I think. In the question, what was it? You know what it would help if I actually put down push to talk? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Newbrian. New, Newbrian? The, the bug ones. Oh, okay. And he was known as the Traitor King. I'll have to pass. I don't know. A noob Iraq. Okay. Now that name is. Frasley? Yes. Who is the elemental ruler of Earth? Oh, I'm going to get this. Uh, you would know this from Cataclysm, and no, it's not Deathwing. Or Goel, or Thrall. Malfurion Stormridge? 
No. Well, mental, oh, yeah. Thurzane, the stone mother. Get my blue question. All right. Uh, which area cannot be found on Tol Barad? Ironclad Garrison, Sentry's Post, Slagworks, or Warden's Vigil? The first one you said. I really need to push to talk. No. Yeah. I'm just going to... Or no, wait. Wrong color, probably. Can, I don't... Unless you need blue, I don't think you can steal. No, I, I, okay. Jer, what type of undead creatures does Sylvanas Windrunner become after became, being slain by Arthas? Uh, Banshee. That is correct. You have won. Nice. Now, okay, Frazzle, your question, which you should get. Who is the king of Gilnadis, uh racial leader of the Worgen? Um, the, the king, um, Gwen Greymane. What was the first word? Gwen? No, no, no. Gwen? No, um, is it... Or, no, I or, or am I thinking of the of the, of the wife? Oh, I, I, I'm back. I'm sorry. Um, I got kidnapped. <laughs> my my boyfriend's grandmother came down. She's trying to. It looks like buying a, an airplane ticket. She's in her late eighties. Doesn't speak English very well, and she's trying to talk to her brother online. And she's getting frustrated with her passport. <laughs> oh, I've been there. Not in that exact situation, but I've been there with this. A similar situation. So uh, she came to me and it's like, I don't have a chance to say, hold on, nothing. Because all you'll hear is Chinese and I can't, I don't even understand it. I'm, 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 I'm white. I will admit it. I am really, really white. I speak English and not very good English. It, it so. reminds me of a, of a sitcom I saw recently where they had a, a grandmother that, uh, that the, that I don't remember what, what series it was, but yeah, that sounds very familiar. Um, so, do I get my blue questions? Attempt to answer and be tied with you guys? Oh, sure. <laughs> or come in third place? Did, did I win that one question? Because I, I, I thought I got it. Because I said Gwen Greymane. Yeah, um, I was giving it to you anyways. It's Glenn. Glenn. G E N N. Okay. Again, great. Oh, sorry, uh, Frosty Fox and Kaz, and Kaz from the Worgen Tower, if you're listening. I should know, but. <laughs> oh. But you got Grey Mane, so I'm, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'll give it to you. Sounds good. So, yeah, l- let's go for third place. Yep, I, I need my blue. All right. In what zone is the dark portal found in Outland? I always screw this up. Um, I want to say blasted land for some reason, but I don't think it is. It's it starts with a B. I know that. It's not bad lands, so maybe it is blasted lands. Um, I'll give you this hint: blasted lands is on the other side of the portal, so it's not blasted lands. That's okay, on, so uh, it is bad lands. Side. No. 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 Uh, yeah. It starts with a B. I know it starts with a B. It starts with a B, right? No. Damn it. I can hear Frasley typing like crazy. Oh, no. I, I, <laughs> I realize I need to mark the tip as, as explicit. <laughs> I realize- yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm going to lose this one, even though I know where the dark portal is. I know the direction when I leave Stormin to go to it. I know I have to go past uh, Karazhan to get there, which now the Karazhan zone is gone out of my mind. Sambasoro is underneath it. Well, remember, though, the question is, where is it found in Outland? 
Yeah. Oh, found in Outland. Oh, I'm thinking of the of Hellfire. It's Hellfire, right? Uh, that's part of it. Hellfire Pensacle? Not Pensacle. Um, you, you're close. You're close. Yeah, I know pencil. you know what it is. I know you know what it is, so I'll give it to you. It's uh, yeah. <laughs> Hellfire Peninsula. Yeah, I just couldn't. It's my speech impediment. So, uh, Jer, you're technically first. Frazzle, you are in second, and I'm in third. But we all got the root wheels done. Nice. nice. It, and and we all won lock cookies. My special lock cookies. The, uh, only the best. So, of course, they're goddamn free. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and now I know that Orgrimmar has uh, has burgers with uh, no meat in it. Anyway, the uh, the Never. barkeep. At- <laughs> That's Nihar. <laughs> Nihar's fault for that. <laughs> so the uh, barkeep tells us that it is time for us to uh, to wrap up. So last drinks are on me and. This has been Frazzlecast, Our, and today we've had um, Jer, and Jer can be found on Twitter at... Uh, it's at Jerwin Rageforge. <laughs> and, uh, um, and definitely follow him. Um, Lady Emma can be found on Lady underscore Emma on Twitter. Um, I'm at Frazzlecastic. You can find the show at frazzlecast.com. Um, email us at show at frazzlecast.com. Um, before we guys want to real quick plug two, two, um, one resource or two resources for podcasting. I, there's a lot, of, a lot of people talk about getting into podcasting. Definitely, if you're at all interested in, in podcasting, go to podcastlaunchpad.com. Um, yeah, I forgot to move to our show exit theme. Let me. We uh, at least make it official. But yeah, um, podcastlaunchpad.com. Um, go to aud- um, the audacity to podcast.com. That's by Daniel J. Lewis. I found some good podcasts there. Um, both the Blue Recruits and the Wargans Howl have been very helpful in uh, answering my questions and, and being supportive. Um, and thank you both to uh, to Jer and Lady Emma for for joining us tonight. Well, yeah, thanks thank a lot you for having me. Up, oh, sorry. As we just speak over each other, thank you for having us. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, oh, absolutely, and 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 definitely well, hope to have you around the table again in the future. So this has been Frazzlecast, and we are well, heading out the door. Don't forget to eat my lock cookies. And no gnome putting, because we get punted enough. No, we got marmots for that. Yes. I have uh, two axes for that. (laughs) Yes. And gnomes will get you. Gnomes are ankle biters. Be careful when you punt. They might cling on. Frazzlecast is a fan podcast that covers Blizzard games. We are not affiliated with Blizzard Entertainment. Views expressed by the host and guests are their own. Some of the art, music, and sound effects come from Blizzard Games and are owned by Blizzard Entertainment, Inc. No copyright infringement is intended.